is The Chris Abraham Show. Good morning, my friends. It's Sunday, September uh, 18, 2022, the year of our Lord. And I just listened to an episode or a partial episode of Hidden Brain uh, with that guy Shankar. And it is called Decoding Emotions. And I will include information about it in the uh, description like I always love to do and uh, or I just paste random crap in there but uh, I want to talk about it because I I as you may know I have aphantasia and SDAM so my connection to the past is very tenuous and a lot of it is uh, as the result of the echoes of people around me uh, reminding me of the way I behaved in the past and all these other things but I really want to discuss my unique experience of growing up a uh, white kid in Hawaii and how uh, I may fish out of water in many places on uh, in America and how my being has affected my work life, has affected my owning a business, has affected all those things. And in many cases, TLDR or TMI I don't know whether my personality traits are the result of growing up in Hawaii where there's a very Asian type of relationship where you would never shame anybody to their face. It's a very um, hammering down all protruding nails, sort of do not shame anybody to their face um, experience. Or if that if my behavior is and often popularly defined as passive aggressive if that behavior is the result of being a child of alcoholics or being an only child or being an introvert or being a lonely child or having my dad move out when i was young i don't know my best friend likes to think that all of it has to do with growing up thinking that I'm a five foot four Japanese boy uh, from when I was itty bitty. On the other hand, I communicate really well with Southern men. So maybe that kind of passive aggressiveness has a lot to do with a kind of um, grandiosity and attempt to make other people feel comfortable and welcome around you uh, an unwillingness to shame in the face. Uh, an unwillingness to be um, perceived as a braggart or whatever. But let's get into this. I don't know. I might even have been over the entire episode by now, the introduction so long. But we'll talk after the break. <laughs> Uh, 
Welcome back to Season 4, Episode 11 of The Chris Abraham Show, formerly known as Chris Cast. Um, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I have always been an oddball, and I don't know whether being an oddball is because I'm an oddball, because Mark says it's my buddy Mark, not my partner Mark. My buddy Mark um, says that it might be an artistic temperament that I've always been avoiding and ignoring. Or it could be growing up in Hawaii where everybody's a little bit like passive aggressive uh, in order to not offend. Because if, if, if I offend you, you're likely to offend me. And if I don't offend you, even if, and if I play around, uh, but that doesn't seem to work because I've got a lot of Asian friends whose Asian moms just say things like, you look ugly, you're stupid, work harder. Um, I'm told that that might have to do with uh, the communication that you use within the family and the communication you use without, without the family or outside the family, but I'm not sure. But it's always been a point of contention uh, in the same way that men constantly insult women about not saying what they mean, about coming to the point, about stop bullshitting me and just tell me. I've always been uh, the recipient of rude Northeasterners who say such appalling things directly to my face. Um, And the uh, episode of uh, Hidden Brain that I listened to partially this morning really sort of sparked my brain with regards to it. Um, The episode is called Decoding Emotions. It is, uh, I believe, the latest episode, and it's described as such. It's 58 minutes worth every second, quote, We like to think that all humans are born with the same core emotions, anger, fear, joy, sadness, and disgust. But what if that's not true? This week, psychologist Batya Batya Mesquita offers a a different model of emotions, one that can help us better to understand our own feelings and those of the people around us. Uh, Brilliant, 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 and so interesting. And I initially thought of it because of my friend Marlisa Mensink. Uh, She is a Dutch friend that I've had since 1992 or 1993, and I spent an entire summer living on her couch and she's always been super nice to me and wonderful to me. And we get along like gangbusters. And she called me emperor. And after years of knowing each other and also being reinforced again and again and again that Dutch people do not, like, Dutch people are 100% brass tacks, I just assume that Marlisa always liked me and wasn't, you know... BSing me or gaslighting me or indulging me while we were gallivanting together. I felt like she was teasing me a lot, like a a big sister or a sister. I never had a sister. And she would make fun of me and call me emperor and, you know, give me some shit. And we'd, you know, totally speak openly and so forth. But a year ago, I felt all of a sudden insecure, like... I was taking advantage of her by staying with her in her apartment on her couch for weeks and weeks and weeks and that I was a a stinky rotten fish and that she just uh, appeased me for whatever reason and that she probably resented that but she never showed any sign of that she and she's a strong empowered openly feminist woman and in a good way, that's a compliment. And so far that we printed T-shirts about called Pomo uh, 96, Postmodernism 96, in purple. I remember we she invited me to a um, uh, her the party that her uh, summer school feminist theory class had. 
um, we did honky tonk. Like we we traveled. We ate um, yummy uh, French fries and curry and peanut sauce. It was a wonderful summer. Uh, I got to live in Utrecht, Netherlands, um, and le learned to only say Dankjewel and Auschwitz. That's it. Um, and I had a great time, but I'm never. I wasn't sure. And now I'm sure that we did have a great time, and that, um, and that I'm. You'll never be sure whether or not your experience of the world is part of. I think identity politics is really interesting because it makes me think things that I never thought about. I mean, my everybody that I, every woman that I know has terrible stories of being in Paris. Um, but even my, you know, ex-girlfriend, Betsy, even she and my ex-girlfriend, Michelle, even they saw that when I'm in Paris, the French love me. I think it must be because of my boyish charm or the fact that I don't hesitate to be absurd or obtuse or that I'm always willing to laugh at myself and buffoon myself or clown myself in order to have a good time or to enable people. I'm always extremely grateful. I'm always completely deferential. I always desperately try to pronounce the language right and not focus on grammar, but focus on, on sound. And I'm always amazingly extremely grateful to be anywhere. Um, and so my experience of Europe and Asia and everything has always been delightfully kind and gentle. And I, I, and then like I felt insecure all of a sudden that the time I was in Berlin, that my uh, f that my best friend Mark's best friend Frank um, was indulging me on behalf of Mark, or maybe didn't enjoy all the dinners that he had me over for and so forth and and I'm like Mark does Frank like me like I felt this real like western imperialist entitlement uh white cisgender thing going on but like you know Frank never had to do all these things like I wouldn't have missed dinner at his house I wouldn't have I wouldn't have known I wouldn't have known if he had parties without me I wouldn't have known if I wasn't included and I wouldn't have missed it either very much I mean they were the best things of my life they were amazing to be part of such a close community but I'm completely insular any of you who know me if you just plug me into a wall I can sit blinking 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 for years on end um, really the only time I become fabulous, Chris, uh, who trans transcends time and space, is when I'm on the um, the coattails of someone who's living a big life. You know, I, I tell Mark that the only reason that I've lived a fabulous life is because of him, uh, or because of Michelle Nolan, or because of Betsy, or because of, you know, um, of Alan Peterson, Patterson, or, or whomever, like... All these cool things that I've done have always been uh, on the coattails of much cooler people. Um, the fact that I go in, oh, even Renaissance Weekend is totally Mark. Uh, Berlin is totally Mark. Um, uh, Nepal is totally Mark. Um, the, 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 the boat trip around uh, through the Panama, no, from Acapulco to L.A. on a... On a uh, on a, a catamaran yacht, that was Mark. Um, my year abroad in England had no intention or interest. It was it was my guidance counselor who who uh, suggested I do it. I mean, <laughs> it it's not a lack of interest in doing these things. It's just like I'm super grateful just you know, to sit here and read a book or watch a movie or write something or do a podcast. I'm, I'm completely, you know, the result of being a lonely child who had an infinite amount, a uh, lonely only child who had an infinite amount of art supplies with which to, and, and books as a young child with which to dick around. 
So, I don't know. I know that Hawaii is, um, it, the only time it gets aggressive in Hawaii is if you don't know your place. Uh, it happened a lot at my high school. Um, I would start uh, feeling like uh, something on a stick. I'd start feeling like a badass mofo and I'd start strutting around uh, the uh, the hallways of St. Louis School and the upperclassmen if I was you know a sophomore or junior uh, would be like oh Chris what you think you bad like there would always be a check and balance to make sure that the gentlemen of Kalaipuhaku um, didn't uh, didn't get all uppity and like you know and I don't know whether and when I was a senior uh, that kind of containment that kind of checks and balance was done by you know the the alpha males of the football team um, ironically I am you know then I was 6'3 and 100 uh, 180 pounds so even then I was big but I've always been a, a more of a of a of a happy people pleaser dog than I've been a a dog at the end of a leash wanting to kill people. Um, but yeah, so moving here, like a lot of the feedback I get is passive aggressive, or uh, you'll completely talk around the thing, or uh, I don't have an instruction manual for what you want or um, or any of these other things. Uh, uh, sometimes when I'm feeling super confident, I think it's willful ignorance or it's, uh, what is it called, um, negging or it is uh, gaslighting or whatever. Uh, but other times I feel like my inability or complete lack of wanting to be rude boy is um is something that it takes two to tango both people have to be the same kind of um i don't know what is the term i mean i was brought up to think it's being well brought up and not freaking asshole rude but it takes two people who have courtly ways, let's put it that way. It takes two people who have courtly ways to communicate this way. Um, if, uh, if, if, if communication requires a strap, or requires a stick, or requires uh, that kind of thing, um, you'll eventually get it from me. Uh, but there's no... The downside of this behavior, and also being a six foot three, three hundred fifty pound guy, is that you know you have five or six opportunities. When when I say something very genteely and I make a request, it's generally an order. It's not optional. And so when I come to you with courtly love, and broadly suggest that this is something that needs to happen and then suggest that it probably has to happen by you. Uh, this is not a, an option. Uh, if you push it back to me, I will bark at you, and which isn't nice. Uh, or if you drop it, or if you don't realize you've been tasked, then I will literally let the whole thing collapse uh, to try to teach us a lesson to not do that again. So the ramifications of not playing the courtly game can be severe like the irony is is that um, just because and this happens in Hawaii too um, just because the uh, Korean manufacturer of diaper bags is willing to do redo orders that you're not happy with a couple times for free out of honor uh, and to avoid humili humiliation or shame doesn't mean that there aren't, uh, that there isn't uh, accountability for that. Like the, the South Korean vendor will drop your contract or will deprioritize your contract or will uh, reject your contract or will fire you. 
there are ramifications for uh, willfully or ignorantly avoiding the um, the communication style of someone who doesn't communicate like you just because you don't you either think you can get away with something or you don't quite understand it the the outcome is the same and I fire people for being unwilling to understand or even being able to understand how I communicate uh, rather than going too far out of my way uh, to communicate in a style that other people can comprehend because in general I'm not an employee anymore I will go over the moon to try to understand subtext of a client but if I have a partner or an employee and they do not communicate in the same way if they don't get what I'm what I'm floating then I fire them and find someone who does and in terms of that uh, it's not even guaranteed that quote a woman who quote speaks in ways that are less direct and less bossy because they've been enculturated not to be bossy pants not even uh, women in my world can understand necessarily the way I communicate and partially that might have to do with the fact that it doesn't compute right like men shouldn't communicate that way but if I want to communicate that way and I'm getting a lot of pushback from people in Hawaii because I don't do it so well anymore but if I want to speak um, with it in a courtly way um, my buddy Mike Tucker does it beautifully uh, any anybody from the south does it just masterfully uh, there's that concept of preventing shame preventing embarrassment sort of a New Yorkers hate it because it's sort of it's courtly it, it it's includes small talk and all these things are like sonars to try to figure out uh, what the context is in the mission um, it is to show intent it's to show kindness it's to show it's like the uh, much of most of you are probably too young to know this although I know my demographic is exactly my age and older so back in the day when there were modems modems would have w what is called uh, an initial handshake so when you dial up with a modem a modem goes and then it hooks in and at that point what it's doing is it's trying to figure out the baud rate it's trying to figure out the error correction it's trying to figure out the noise on the line it's trying to find out um, what type of of conversation it's having whether it's ANSI or whatever data stream or TCP IP or I don't know whatever and that's what small talk is in the southern and Hawaiian culture uh, if you avoid all that you might be sending someone TCP IP and all they want is I don't know a token ring so that's why I will small talk people for days and days and days before I I do anything of import because I want an opportunity I want to give the other person every opportunity to run to run away I want to give every op everyone opportunity to see my personality to see my humor to see my playfulness to get a feeling for my intellect and maybe my politics and maybe my uh, my knowledge base and then after all that then I will engage uh, at the highest baud uh, that I can communicate at based on what their interest is what they might feel compelled to discuss or at what f reading ease is it Fleisch Fleisch or is Fleisch mean flesh in German uh, what 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 uh, level of sophistication I should just you know whether I should stick to seventh grade English or whether I could start to use my ten dollar words um, that's what I use it for um, if you 
everything's good intel though, right? If you are rude to me, a real shithole, if you keep on looking past my shoulder, like, I'll start building up uh, walls against you and I'll be like, uh, garbage person, fuck them as well. Like, it's always a two-way street. Um, that's what you need to learn in, you know, in any type of spycraft. You need to learn that everything that you learn about someone else are, uh, are signals that uh, someone else can learn about you. Um, and what I've learned from a big, big, much bigger spook than me is that, uh, is that 95% of all spy conversation needs to be based on a, um, based on the truth, right? You can't, you can't, you can't go that far from the truth. Um, so, so it's really interesting. It's really interesting to listen to this article. I highly recommend that you explore this. I don't know, right? I mean, as a personal note, like my mom and I really had a terrible opera, terrible time communicating and we spent the same amount of time in Hawaii and I don't think that woman ever learned to speak to speak that way. I mean, she was always in my opinion always really acerbic, like all the things that she got positive feedback for for being a, a hot young woman in Jersey City in New York City. Like, and even, you know, like, even as sort of a quasi-Irish queen debutante, she never realized that none of that shit really worked. Like, it always came across kind of acerbic, kind of rude, kind of bitchy, kind of mean-spirited, kind of seeish. And, um, I don't know why she didn't mellow. And she told me why. She told me that... I ain't going to be any, she didn't talk like that. She's like, I'm not going to be anybody's bitch. I'm a strong woman. I need to assert my, I need to show people that I'm tough. I'm a feminist. And I'm like, yeah, but you're, you're putting yourself on a desert island in, in Hawaii. Like, not only are you in the middle of, not only are you in the middle of the Pacific around nobody you know except Bob and me, my dad and me, and maybe a couple of your transplant friends, but you're in your own additional island uh, out of your defiance. And so you must be a really, like, lonely person. Like, really scared and lonely if all you have is a wall of bitch. Because I know for a fact that this doesn't work in Hawaii. I, for a fact, spent my entire time, my entire 12 years there, learning pigeon learning to fight, learning, um, uh, learning all about local culture, uh, learning about body language, um, learning, um, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run, uh, learning, uh, all the local cultural talk points, memorizing rap replinger. Like when I go into a place, I desperately try to create as many um, social signals that people have in common as possible so that they know that I'm invested in their culture and hopefully I believe that that plus a huge amount like I treat the world a hundred percent all the time as if I went to um, um, spy and and diplomat finishing school I treat every relationship as if you are the ambassador for Sri Lanka. Um, uh, that courtliness, that 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 attempt at um, never trying to, um, never being, never. I desperately try never to condescend to anybody, never to think that my, they're my lesser, never to think that I take them for granted. Uh, always believe, always make them believe that I appreciate them, and this isn't some lame, of, uh, of pandering attempt at um, and at. Uh, um, I was going to say esprit de corps, but it's not. Um, um, it was just at the tip of my tongue. 
some form of, of noblesse oblige. It's not. It's not a condescending, queenly, like, oh, there, there, you pagan babies. I think it's so charming what you're doing on this island of yours. Oh, isn't it quaint, the kind of things that you do? Oh, really? Fabulous, darling. N isn't it nice how much of a... How I think that your peasant garb is so charming. No. I think... I'm, I'm amazed by everybody, man. Like, I think that Frank is one of the most sophisticated, erudite, charming... I mean, he makes, he makes being a single, well, he makes being a, a divorced dad sexy. Like, he, he was both a playmate with his kids, and when there was a dinner party over, the kids were not invited. No dinner party ever, ever, ever included kids. It was an adult-only space. The kids get to fuck off and be kids in their room quietly while the adults laugh and drink and eat and feast and talk and communicate, and that is badass. I admire Mina Aslama and Marlisa Mensik and Saskia Vingerling, and I admire uh, Long Island Keith and his family. And he can be a real asshole, but at his wedding, he was so courtly and generous and kind, but all of his family was there, and I wonder if all these New Yorker assholes and New Jersey assholes, I wonder if it's the opposite of that uh, Korean woman and her mom, where the Korean family is like rough and tough to each other within the walls of family. You know, the, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, dragon mom, is that what it's called? And then there's this courtliness and, and, um, this lack of shame, hammered down, uh, hammered down, uh, protruding nails thing that happens outwardly, and and maybe that's differently when when it comes to New Yorker families because um, Keith just adores his mom and his dad, and he's I don't know I don't know anything, dudes. Like these are why I do these. Podcast. So I'm hoping that as I dump my brain out for all to listen to, and for the one, two, or three people who do listen, we can get into a conversation about this. Like, what do you think? What do you believe? Am I full of shit? Do I have an accurate representation of myself? Do I do, is my perception that I'm open and honest and cheerful and friendly uh, conditional? Do people feel that conditionalness? Um, yesterday, I went to get a breakfast burrito at um, uh, at Burrito Bros uh, on Columbia Pike, and I'm really sweet with them. I'm always like, "How are you guys doing? How's LA Bar? How are you? Hey, can I order the, you know?" And then I constantly said throughout the order, "I want the red like." Like, I didn't say Tabasco. I should have said Tabasco. But I'm like, I want, I want the red hot sauce. Like, I don't want the, the, um, uh, I don't want the four, like, fancy hot sauces that are delicious on the regular, you know, chicken burrito. I want the, the red salsa picante kind of sauce. I said that again and again and again. And then they put, uh, the chipotle sauce on. And I'm like, I'm like, no, no, I want the red one. And then finally, they found the um, they found the uh, the the Tabasco style one, and I asked them to put it on. And then when it was done, I said, "Listen," in a real assertive voice. Listen, I don't want to be an asshole. I don't want to be the asshole. If I were the asshole, I would send this back to have it remade. But I do not want to waste food, so I am going to take this with the salsa that I didn't want mixed with the salsa that I did want and happily go and have breakfast with it. But I want you to know that uh, I'm displeased with this situation. And then I said thank you and left. Like to me that is so far 
so far, like for the rest of the the half an hour that it took for me to eat the burrito, I desperately wanted to run back to the uh, kiosk or you know whatever the the standing kiosk quasi train car caboose that their store is in and throw myself at their mercy and say, I'm sorry I acted out that way. I really didn't mean that. Uh, it turned out being delicious. I hope you can forgive me. So I didn't do that. I assume uh, Mark tells me all the time that when I feel like my communication is so rude and so mean-spirited and so demanding and so straightforward and completely uh, to the point where you're going to divorce me as a friend or a business partner or a colleague or a boyfriend, Mark tells me, well, you're just getting close to communicating clearly. So, I don't know. Based on that scenario, what do you think? I'm out of juice. I will include the link to the Hidden Brain, Hidden Mind or, uh, episode in the description. And when we come back, I will tell you how to contact me. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show, formerly known as Chris Cast. I am drinking cold Cafe Bustello coffee from yesterday and loving it. Not like, not iced coffee, just cold yesterday's coffee. Um, I transfer my coffee from my uh, 18 cup uh, mocha es express stovetop coffee into a uh, an insulated uh, um, bottle and then um, generally speaking I only have one cup in the morning before I go on my coffee run and drink tons of espresso and so there's generally one or two cups left over in the carafe. I have a, an insulated carafe that came with um, a uh, a ninja. Is it a ninja? Uh, from a, a ninja coffee pot that my that one of my clients gave me for Christmas, and um, I got rid of the coffee maker and kept the carafe because. I'm a Cafe Bustello Forever uh, Mocha Express. Um, hey, Google, who makes the Mocha Express coffee maker? Bialetti. I'm a Bialetti guy. Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. Hey, Google, stop. So, I'm a Bialetti Mocha Express kind of guy. I have every size and... I just went ahead and bought the $100, uh, is it 99 or 190 Anyway, there's one that you can't find anywhere, and it's, I think it's, it's called an 18 cup. I think there's 27 point something ounces that it makes, and I just make that, man. Um, so, how you can connect to me, I'm chrisabraham.com, that's my HQ. If you go to chrisabraham.com slash contact, you'll see all my contact stuff, but I usually put it in the description. Uh, you can email me at chris at abraham.su. Um, the SU top level domain, TLD, is for the former Soviet Union. And the reason why I am a Soviet commie is because as someone who has the last name Abraham, who is, you know, uh, the uniter of three faiths, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. It's impossible to find Abraham.com. And when I was a younger man in my 20s, I always admired people who had, like, first name, at, last name, dot, top-level domain. So when I found that I could still register uh, SU, Soviet Union domains, especially since I live in D.C. and I was a kid of the Soviet Union... My nostalgia kicked in, and I went through the hoops required 
to probably be on all kinds of FBI lists, but I was able to secure Abraham.su and Girovic.su from the Russian Federation's uh, um, uh, registrar. In fact, my company's uh, email is garriscorp.com, but my short form, since the people who had garris.com wanted $8,700 for the domain, I bought an Icelandic address, G-E-R-R dot I-S. Anyway, on with the show. Plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one is my personal cell phone. But if I don't know you, you gonna you gonna if being ignored. Um, you can also use that phone number to reach me on Signal and Telegram and uh, WhatsApp and uh, sig- Signal. Telegram, WhatsApp, and I guess, I guess, somewhere else, I don't know. If you want to reach me on Google Chat, I'm cabraham at gmail.com, and all my socials are like Chris Abraham, right? So, twitter.com slash chrisabraham, reddit.com slash you slash chrisabraham, um... Instagram.com slash Chris Abraham, LinkedIn.com slash in slash Chris Abraham, um, Facebook.com slash Chris Abraham. Maybe that's it. My Tumblr is Chris Abraham.com. And I think that's it. Oh, yeah, if you want to schedule 15 minutes of chatty chat chat. For real, like we're, we'll literally talk and, oh, you can text me at plus one, two, oh, two, three, five, two, five, zero, five, one. But if you really want to chat with me for 15 minutes on voice for free, um, without me ignoring you, uh, go to calendly.com slash Chris Abraham slash 15. And, and, uh, that'll schedule on both our calendars a 15 minute chat. I would love to do that. Um, and I love you with all my heart. Uh, tschüss, tschüssi, auf Wiedersehen, a tout à l'heure, a demain, hasta mañana, hasta, hasta luego. Um, ciao, goodbye, aloha, and mahalo. Love you guys. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.